Hi guys, Fox here. Uh, I thought I would make this video as the last video of the Epic uh, CNC upgrade, uh, showing you the results and surface finish of this upgrade. Um, but for all of you who are new to the channel or haven't seen uh, previous videos, I would like to take you through the short journey how it all started. Long, long time ago, five years to be precise, I had the crazy idea to build a CNC machine out of granite. And because I couldn't find any information anywhere, I decided to start documenting the progress. No matter the outcome, if it will work or if it will break. Just to show you guys if it's worth pursuing or not. The trickiest part of making a CNC machine by yourself is to find a flat base from which you can build on. To have the machine as square and flat as possible. And the flattest thing I could found was the granite surface plate, which is used in metrology for very precise measurements. Those plates are precision ground to be within few microns over the whole area. Somehow I managed to build this base within a one or two microns of precision, which later on I destroyed by using the cheapest Chinese rails and bolt screws I could find, which eventually failed, leading me into a new YouTube series called the Epic CNC Upgrade, where I used precision top-of-the-line brands, a monstrous rails and grounded bolt screws with the servo motors and new control boards. So basically I kept the granite and I replaced everything else. And again, I was sharing all the journey uh, with you guys, step by step, trying to explain as best as I could what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And now I guess it's the time to show you the results, which brings us back to this video. Funny enough, making a CNC uh, wasn't my main goal. My main goal was to make things on a CNC with as best possible surface finish I could get. Um, so I don't have to do any surface finishing after the CNC. And you know, you're watching all of those videos on YouTube where they have all of those big machines and on the you know trade shows and they have all of those shiny parts and uh, you know I wanted to have something like this myself but um, I didn't really want to spend uh, you know 200,000 plus dollars for the machine and I didn't have the space for the machine so I made it myself. And now I would like to show you some examples of the finished products I'm making uh, using this machine not only cutting you know a flat aluminium and stuff but like you know how it starts how it looks and how it's delivered I thought I could explain something more about the product I'm showing you this is a turntable and a turntable controller for movie props where you need to do a photo shoot of a prop or if you have to scan the prop its main function is to rotate the prop on a turntable by set amount of degrees you choose and um, to synchronize the strobes with the cameras. Once the shoot is complete, you take pictures to the photogrammetry software and you extract 3D geometry out of those pictures, textures and some shader properties. Now I want to show you how the machine is meaning the controller. The footage is in real time, it just cut into smaller sections, so you're not getting bored too much. You are looking at the internal part of the controller, something no one will ever see. I really like that intro and I had to share it. Now let's take a look at the finished product. Uh, how does it look? It's anodized black and the finish is uh, quite surreal because it doesn't even look like a metal anymore. The closest thing which comes to my mind it's like a black obsidian because you kind of see through the surface but not really. Like it has The black has a depth to it for some reason. Um, so I really, really like it. 
at the beginning I've been sandblasting the controllers but now with this finish I just don't have to it just goes straight from the machine to the to the anodizing top cover for the controller has only two operations top and the bottom and I don't have to handle it too much but the bottom but the bottom section has uh, operations on the five sides handling it is getting really tricky you touch it and you ruin the surface finish you try to wipe something off it and you ruin the surface finish you leave it too long outside and it oxidizes and you can see it I have to say I'm quite proud of that one uh, I really like the bevels on um, outsides and there is even a tiny bevel around the connectors which is 0.1 millimeter it's really really hard to see it with the naked eye but since I know it's there it makes me calm top cover and the bottom has been done on two different operations but when you put them together they just fit perfectly there is no edge or something you can feel that there is connection between those two now let's take a look at another example you're looking at the pictures of the camera shutter splitter which takes the trigger signal and splits it into 10 cameras at once I know those pictures are photoshopped but let's see how far it's the real product from the photograph and in my humble opinion it's not that far it wasn't really that hard to make these pictures I just cleaned the dust did some color correction and I had tons of light so I could make it all sharp and at the moment I'm struggling a bit with the depth of field due to lack of uh, strong light sources while you're enjoying close-ups I want to share with you a funny story I'm being approached time to time by milling companies which offer their services sometimes I reply if I would like to have something priced or milled as a reference I sending them some of those pictures or you can see those pictures on my site if they can match the quality as soon the question appears there is a very long and a big disturbing silence half an hour to an hour and then the silence is followed up with the answer no one guy even said that no but they would really like to use those pictures as a reference for their anodizer I guess it's safe to assume that the epic upgrade did work and I've done my job well I hope you guys are sharing the same opinion right I hope you liked what you saw uh, I have one more example those gonna be a pictures because it was a top secret job and I think I can show that much I was using that end mill um, to cut a stock I um, mean the part all at once ouch I, I was considering going bit by bit but then it will be deflecting uh, uh, only here so I thought ah screw it I have to go deep anyway so I'm gonna be cutting all at once so I think it was a uh, 45 millimeter deep cut so like almost all the flutes I left five millimeters and it worked just fine um, and I know there is always the question um, will it mill steel yes I've been milling some steel not for myself but some third parties they could say that and the steel I think it's easy uh, the hardest part was uh, I think the trickiest part I've done it was a stainless steel um, when I had to mill something uh, quite intricate out of a stainless steel and uh, yes machine didn't have any problem cutting stainless steel it machine did that 20 times faster than I was able to chop this flat bar um, yeah uh, so that was kind of funny uh, right now I'm really happy with the performance of the machine uh, no problems there no chatter no flex uh, cuts really well the problem which I have is the end mills so I've been trying all sorts of different end mills like uh, not coated and coated and to be honest I can't really see 
visible difference on milled part. And it doesn't matter if it's a Chinese uh, end mill, uh, forget the name, some kind of well-known brand in China or outside of China, but well-known uh, versus American brand. Seriously, I kind of thought that the Chinese were the finish after the Chinese was better than the American one, but that's subjective, I guess. That's why I built this uh, microscope to do some more investigations. Um, yeah, if you have, if, if you are a company and you would like to donate a couple of end mules uh, for testing, some pretty nice quality end mules that will be appreciated. Um, so far, I've been switching uh, to a diamond, uh, polycrystalline diamond inserts, and I'm gonna be talking about those in the next videos. Um, you know, observing the stuff under the microscope, and then, um, I think I have an idea for the new series um, where I'm gonna be trying to. Uh, I guess explain and show some uh, ways of making your mirror perfect surface finish or in general to improve the surface finish on the CNC machines um, with the tools or without the tools those are gonna be quite interesting I hope uh, things I would share and yeah yeah so definitely the next video is going to be the microscope and we're going to be scrutinizing the end mills and the finish which they leave. Uh, so stay tuned and see you next time.